Hey, how's it going? This is Roy from Rep My Funeral. That was rate, by the way. So I needed to do something in the standard renderer uh, using depth of field, and I knew I'd done a tutorial on it, and then I discovered I had never uploaded it to YouTube. It's on my Vimeo account, but not in YouTube. So that is what this is. I'm uploading it today. Now, please bear in mind, this is seven years old. Uh, it's a little different to how, I'm, how my newer stuff is, um, but it's got some really useful information in it. Some of it is a little bit dated now, uh, but there is definitely some things in there that you might find interesting. So also the resolution was uh, only 720, so I'm gonna upscale that. Uh, hopefully that'll help a little bit, and maybe you'll get something out of it. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. Uh, gonna do a quick tutorial for you today. Uh, it's about uh, depth of field. I'm gonna create a quick depth, part, depth pass. Um, and then show you how you can use that with um, the built-in features in uh, After Effects and Photoshop um, just using the uh, the standard um, lens blur filters. Um, so yeah, let's uh, hop in and uh, see how we how we get on with that. So here we are in cinema. Now, uh, yeah, the reason I'm doing this mainly is because it's, uh, it's, it's actually quite a simple thing and I keep forgetting how to do it. So I uh, I figure if I do a tutorial, it'll one it'll help me remember, but also then if I forget in the future, I can refer back to it. But also it gives you guys, um, if you know if you're watching this, then perhaps it might be sort of some use to you. So this is not a tutorial on how to use cinema. So I'm going to assume that you know how to use this if you are doing this already. So I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to dump it into a cloner like that. All right, uh, I'm just going to set that to zero and move it away a little bit and set my instances up. Okay, we'll move the camera around and put it somewhere about there, like that. Um, I think uh, to try and attempt to make this look relatively pretty, we'll, we'll add a floor. Um, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make the spheres a little smaller. Um, there we go, like that. And we're going to raise the cloner a bit like that. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, um, let's place these on the, on the floor like so. Okay, so they're sitting on the floor. There we go, we've got a load of balls on the floor. Fantastic, brilliant. Right, okay, um, next. We need to create a camera. We hit the add camera button uh, and turn it on. There we go. I'm gonna use something like a 50 mil. Just move that down. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is set the focus distance. Now first I'm gonna click details and turn on the depth of field map front blur and the depth of field map rear blur. By default, it puts the uh, end on both of those to about a thousand centimeters, um, which is okay for the minute. Uh, let's have a look at where the focus object is sitting. Now, uh, if you press the uh, button there that gives you the overhead view, the bit you're looking for is there. That's where your focal point is. Now, you can actually specify uh, an object. For example, I'll just quickly create a, a cube. Uh, move that back in space a little bit. There we go. Oop, to about there. Now, if we dump that cube into the focus object of the camera like that, you can see it automatically jumps to it. That's fantastic if you've got a single object. If you're using a cloner, it's not quite so easy because these are all duplicates. So uh, we are not going to do it like that in this case, but it sometimes is quite useful. Um, Let's get rid of the cube. So we'll just do it manually. So just with the camera highlighted, you can just grab this little dot here and drag it to where you want it to sit. So if I want mine on about, say, the third one along. Um, one, two, three. So that's actually not far here. So maybe, yeah, let's do the third one along. So it's actually about here. And zoom in and have a look a little bit. Um, we can also pull the, if we go back and look at the, details see we've got the start one we can drag that there or we can drag this little dot so if we make it so it's ending on about this first ball here the back one's probably all right like that maybe just pull it back a little bit okay um just gonna switch camera off a moment while i have a look at the lighting because we need some some lighting here i'm having some trouble with the camera there we go 
So let's add some lighting to the scene. Um, I'm not going to worry about lighting it too much because of the fact that this is just as an example. So I'm just going to put a light on, turn on the shadow you know, area or something like that will do. Um, make a copy of that light that was uh, holding control whilst dragging creates a copy, by the way. And uh, let's just have a quick look, see how that's looking. Oh, look, that's beautiful, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to add something here just to make this look just a little bit better. It's a, it's quite difficult when it's just a row of balls. But if we go effector with the cloner highlighted, we can actually do random. Uh, now, I don't want them going in every direction randomly. But maybe if we add scale, just to make it so it's not quite so uniform. Uh, you can tell I'm on the slow PC again today. Right, there we go. That looks rubbish, actually. Let's just get rid of that random effect. In fact, I think I've broken it. Look at that. That's a terrible thing to say, but my balls have gone all wibbly. Right. Um, I'm just hitting undo it here. There we go. Right. We're back to where we were. Okay. We'll just stick with that for now. All right. <laughs> um, I'm just going to not that one. That one. Not that one. One of these will. No. No. Ah, that'll do. But just, I'm just trying to move my way a little bit just so they don't look quite so uniform but right quick create some textures i don't want this to be too much of a thing about cinema because it's not uh this is just a what i would normally do for a standard floor um, if i wasn't putting any effort into it <laughs> uh, da -dum -dum, like that and something for the balls themselves let's do something uh might look quite groovy something like this there we go right and then put that on the cloner so we've made ourselves a bunch of spheres there we go all right which as you can see are all in perfect clarity now um cinema 4d has a depth of field thing so you can now that we've enabled it on the camera and everything you can actually go to your uh render settings i'm just going to set actually the uh ambient occlusion because i like that that makes that makes quite a bit of difference to the, the shadows. So it slows down your render a little bit, but I really like ambient occlusion. Um, but let's also set the depth of field. So we can turn that on like that. And just by default, I'll just render that out and we can have a look to see how that is. Um, yeah, the, the uh, ambient occlusion does fix a little bit of the graininess going on here. But like I say, we're, we're not spending too much time on making this look perfect but you'll see now it adds the depth of field so that's there and that's there so that's not too bad you can see that's the one that's in focus um, but I'm not so keen on using this one because obviously you have to it, it adds it after it renders so I would prefer to do it uh, sort of manually um, so that I have a bit more control over it so I'm just going to switch that off uh, and prepare this for uh, rendering out so this is exactly the same for if you were working with an animation or a, a still, but in this case, we're just going to use a still. I'm going to enable multipass, and on the multipass button, we're just going to select depth. Okay, now if we go to save, we select, uh, let's use a PNG, for example, on both of these. Okay, so for the regular image, I'll put them in my depth test, so we'll call it off test image and uh, we'll just copy and paste that into here and do depth just so we know the difference okay that's all we really have to do in here um, we'll put the anti-aliasing up a little bit just to make it look a little nicer uh, okay and that's it so now we press control R and uh, we'll uh, render that out do, 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 do. There we go. That's now done. Uh, while that's doing that, you can actually see what's going on here. Um, by default, you'll probably be sat on history. But if you go to layer, 
and go single pass, there's your depth map. Now what this is, is the darker the area, the more in focus it'll be. So as you can see, that's perfectly black, so that will be perfectly in focus. These are getting lighter gray, so therefore they'll be getting more and more blurred with anything white is completely blurred. So now that we've done that, we can hop into, let's start with After Effects. Okay, uh, just gonna import the file like this. So we wanna grab both of these and import them. Now the first image, let's make a new composition with that. Right, and as you can see, it's just the image. Uh, and then we can put our depth map in over the top. And we'll just switch that off for the minute. We now, this is this is how easy it is, but for some reason I always struggle to remember this. But we now just go layer, new adjustment layer, and uh, we do an effect, and blur and sharpen, and in there you've got um, camera lens blur. This is the built-in plugin for doing this. There is, uh, there's some paid ones. Uh, there's one I can't really pronounce. It's called Frush Lift or Frish Lift or something like that, uh, Lens Care. And from what I gather, it's very, very good. Um, but it's it's quite pricey. About, it's about $199 or something like that. So, yeah, great. If you're doing it all the time and you're using it all the time, fantastic. But uh, if you're just doing little projects here and there and, you know, you don't want to spend that kind of money, the, the built-in one, you know, is uh, will do the job for you. Um, so uh, what we do, camera lens blur. Uh, and then under blur map, you've got layer. And you can actually choose... There's our depth, boom, done. And that's it. Um, you can you can set uh, you know your how blurry it is or not blurry at all and that sort of thing. Uh, before is quite good. Uh, you can actually move the position uh, with this one here of where the you know what what bit you want in focus. That's pretty groovy. Um, but, uh, also, there's something you might notice here. If you if you see these uh, edges, you can see you've got this kind of purple edging. Um, that's actually the the edge pixels. There's a button here that you can uh, repeat edge pixels, and that will just fix that for you. And that's that's it really. That's all you have to do. You can then tweak that to your heart's content. You know, maybe lower the opacity if you if you want to just make it not quite as strong. Uh, something like that. You know, turn it up. Oh, not that, not that much. What have I done there? Oh dear, ten, like that. And then turn your opacity up here and just bring it in gently, like that. There's lots of sort of things you can do with that. Um, okay, so that's how you do it in After Effects. Let's have a quick look, see how you do it in Photoshop. So we go File and Open. We're gonna open. Let's open both images. Bomb, bomb. Right, in our Depth of field test, right. Okay, so with the depth image, what we do is hit Control A and that selects everything and then hit Control C and that now copies that into the clipboard. Go back to our test image, make a copy of the background by dragging it into the new page button and then hit here the uh, the mask, the layer mask button and you get the little square there. Now this is the bit that I never remember. If you actually hold Alt and click on that, it's kind of like a making this editable thing. You're now inside this, and now if you press Control V, you can place your depth map inside that, and you can see that's there. Uh, and then you just click on the main one to go back to that. Control D to deselect. Now, uh, this is where you do something that I've forgotten what is. Oh, yes, that's right. It's the filter, lens blur. That's the one. So blur, lens blur. And as you can see, it's already it already tells um, already sets this so that the source is the layer mask, uh, and it does it for you. So uh, you can set faster, more accurate on the preview, um, depending on what you want to do. You can turn the blur up a bit. Yeah, maybe that's a bit too much. <laughs> uh, so we set the lens blur in the radius there. There's a lot of different buttons there. I mean, that's cool. I'm happy with that. Press OK, job's done. That's all you have to do. So, yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, have fun and get blurring. Cheers. Bye.